how could you get in trouble with a bot if the phone number is invalid or if you have a consent clause in the submission form for an online inquiry? Well, first off, if it's an invalid number and you make a phone call, it's going to be invalid. Most of these bots and human fraud forms, doesn't matter how they're getting it, they're using real people's information. So, again, we'll use NEMA as the example. They pick up and call NEMA based on a bot that filled out a form that passed all the tests that went undetected, have his real number. They call him and say, hey, we're calling you based on the information you filled out on the form. And he turns around and says, I didn't fill out your form. That's where the issue comes into play. Even if you have a consent at the bottom there, he didn't fill out the form. And that's the problem that's creating, you know, because then he sits down, he hangs up the phone. You know, this is the sixth call I've gotten today. People ask me about car insurance because maybe they resold that lead to, you know, a dozen, a half a dozen other people. And then he's watching TV, it pops up, you know, TCPA, if you got a call that you weren't expecting, let's go sue, you know, and it's that easy. He picks up the phone, makes a phone call and tries to make a couple bucks out of it, as opposed to being the serial guys that are looking to make, you know, a living off of it. But this is just, you know, Nima got called enough times and got upset enough. He might call one of these quick lawyers online and just say, hey, I just got another call from somebody. It's just pissed me off and I need to get this taken care of. So that's how the trouble can start.